when we're pushing ourselves as hard as we can to struggle through pain and discomfort in order to create any sense of peace and stability, the chaos or whatever you want to call it that is just right outside the boundaries of that safe space that we've created, if you want to call it entropy um, or chaos or that decay or destructive death component of this life experience, it's so easy and so fast. You can take years and years and years to build something up and put every single ounce of blood, sweat, and tears into that, only to have it utterly destroyed in a day. And that <laughs> is partly what makes this life so exciting and so interesting and beautiful. And um, at the same time, especially for those of us who have had our power seemingly diminished in a relative sense. You know, you look around and you see that there are so many people who are just vastly more capable than you are in different dimensions of life. And then you look at yourself and say, wow, I can only do 1% of what they can do. And you make that comparison. And it, it can feel like a bit meaningless or a bit bizarre or kind of hopeless or nonsensical even to just try? Why would you even try if what you can achieve in your whole lifetime isn't even 1% of what this other person could achieve in a year or two? Um, so when we compare ourselves like that and lose that sense of subjectivity, it can be very easy to lose hope. Now, I'm not saying that you should lose hope. I'm not saying that you should compare yourselves with anyone else. I'm just saying that that's something that I do. And that's something that I struggle with. It's been a weird journey for me because I've lived a lie my entire life and not, mm, yeah, no, 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 most of my life. The lie is that, you know, ah, I am worth I'm worth it, that I have value. That's the lie that I've been living, is that I have value, which in reality, I don't think that that's actually true. Um, I don't think that there is any value here. I don't think that there is any judgment that can be made on that value either. And so if I am to exist in a world wherein I perceive people to be making value judgments all day, every day, and then acting based on those judgments, well, where do I fit into that system if I don't have value and would prefer not to make those judgments at all? These things change with the times. All I'm saying, there are trends. Trends come and go. You know, today it's neurodivergence. That's the new trend. Next year, it'll be another trend and I'll probably hate that one too. So all I'm saying is for me personally, there is a resistance or reluctance to jump on any of these bandwagons of like incomplete understanding. And I'm sort of elitist in that way. That, no, I don't want to be part of that group because I want to be part of the group that is that includes all of it at the same time, not sequentially in time. I don't want to be caught up in this movement and that movement and this movement and that movement and just lose sight of the bigger picture because in doing so, I would lose control over myself and would have to live out what feels like a smaller existence. I would have to encapsulate or crunch myself into a small headspace that sees things from a particular perspective and acts based on that perspective. So what do I do? Do I just not act at all? Because you can't do everything. I mean, you can do everything if you are able to maintain this wider view while taking specific actions. And that's not something that I've figured out how to do consciously. The way that my mind has arranged or organized itself to protect me from myself um, I'm disappointed in myself for letting it get this 
bad on a physical bones and tissue level because my body doesn't work anymore in the way that it always did. And that's a really vague statement. So I don't really know what you want me to tell you because this is the way that it is and these are the decisions that you made and this is the consequence of those decisions. You can, you have complete freedom to within a limited space move and if it feels too small for you and you want to be born into a larger space, then the only way to do that is to stop saying things like the only way to do that is. To widen your palette of thoughts in the sense of like, if you were a painter and you have a palette of paints, if your only colors are red and black and white, um, it's going to be a bloody mess. And you've got to add some other colors. And I'm not really a color scientist, so I don't know what you can make out of red, white, and black. I mean, I know you can make pink out of red and white, but beyond that, and gray out of white and black, but beyond that, I don't think there's much else that you can make there. But I do think that that points to that love can be found in the gray areas. If you want to take pink to represent love and gray to represent that blending of the black and white thought process, even there, you, you can turn that conflict into something else or into the idea that there is something else possible, even if it's limited. You know, th 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 it's a different way of phrasing it that may at least feel a little bit better, but that's not really going to solve your problem. The problem is, is that you believe that there is some thing wrong. And if you see the world such that everything is a reflection of yourself, then inevitably what is wrong is you because you're seeing wrong in everything or in some things or in most things in that supposedly external world that you're perceiving. And whether it started, it doesn't really matter where it started, but the sense of badness or wrongness that is within you is also then in everything else. So there's always going to be that, that judgment. It feels like it's just baked in to the crystal lattice of reality. Every single piece of reality has that negative self stamp on it. That's like the opposite of a validation stamp. It's just, you know, rejection just stamped on every single thought, idea, emotion, concept, or whatever, and it's all you. You're the thing that is bad. Um, when that situation arises, in my experience, it's very tricky to get out of. And I'm speaking as someone who I don't think that I have gotten out of it. There's only two ways that I know of to get out of that. I don't even know if I, I mean, I couldn't say if they work. One is through the the grace or good fortune of another human being that is sort of suitable suitable to be able to reflect that to you in a way that connects. Um, and the other way is just through the grace of, I don't know. People will say that it's a choice that you can make. They'll say it's always a choice. That's the whole thing is you can always make a choice, right? So if that's true, why is it that we try and seemingly fall short in making that choice to say, yes, I'm good. Yes, I'm whatever it is. Uh, that affirmative choice, the positive choice. Why is it that we seem to fall short and could, in my case, I'm talking like bashing my head against the wall for decades. No change. Nothing's, nothing is good. Nothing is coming. So why is that? Like, What could be causing that or is that a problem that it's taking so long? Because it's exquisitely painful and there's so very little joy or happiness or positivity in all those years. Um, and the body hurts 
all the time, every day, and the physical medical problems are just amplified. And so my life is really bad. So my life is really bad. So my life is really bad. So, and then what? Because if that's it, and it's just that, what do we do? Can't just say my life is really bad. I mean, the fact that I'm able, I wasn't able to talk about this before because I was physically incapacitated on the floor eight hours a day, couldn't even move my body around. So I didn't have the energy in my body to even think thoughts and talk about the thoughts. Now I can talk about them and think about them. Is it good? Bad? Don't know. Is that better? Worse? Don't know. Because it's like, well, what am I trying to do here? Trying to find, trying to find my way through this using after all this time of building my body back up so that I could actually get a little bit of energy flowing to my brain so that I could think about things. Now what I'm going to use this thinking to somehow see it, to somehow see where the, what is it that I'm looking for? The little crack in the wall that I can see the light coming through and I can go towards that? Or is it opening up the heavens from on high? Or is it trying to bring things into my heart? Uh, or is it trying to unburden myself and releasing all the weight? It's always something. That there's some movement that needs to happen that is a release or a catharsis or a rebirth or an awakening or, uh, you know, that whatever it is that, that needs to be happening, uh, and it, it isn't happening, right? That's the idea is it's not happening. It should, it needs to happen in order for things to be good, but it is not happening and it hasn't happened. And if it's not going to happen right now, when is it going to happen? It's sort of like an, it's only, it's an anger, but it's also like a, this like strong desire. And, you know, we, we can think, oh, well, there's this little me inside of me. That's like my, that's a little me. That's actually the, the true me that is just completely covered up by all of this trash. Call it trash. We shouldn't call it trash right? All this trash, what? All this trash that's my personality, all the trash that's my ego, all the trash that's all of my memories and thoughts and feelings and opinions, all the trash, right? So what do we, we want to just throw all the trash away? Is that the idea? Who's going to do that throwing away? Itself? Um, everyone has their own problems and they're all just as bad as everyone else's problems. So why do we even conceptualize it in that way? Where am I in space and time? Where am I in space and time right now? C couldn't tell you. I could not tell you because the only way to know that is through a sort of subjective and reflective sense of self, which is a relational sense of self. There are no fixed coordinates and there's no frame of reference that you can say this is where I am now it's completely arbitrary and made up completely 100% totally arbitrary and made up and I'm not saying that that's ab absolute or true I'm just making a point that could be wrong but it's probably right for now because whether I think that I'm the center or whether I think that anything, the earth or the sun or the center of the universe, none of these things are real. And um, the only way that I can conceptualize it as of right now is that there are infinite center points that are infinite reflections of the exact same everything that is a sort of like convoluted, like singularity point or whatever. That is that pivot point that we have to go through. And I'm just like, well, how do I actually get through there? Why is it that I'm stuck the way that I am? Why does it hurt so bad? More than that, though, is why can't I just live a human life? Why don't I get to have a normal life, a happy life? Why don't I get to have what is all that that people seem to have? People seem to have those things. Meaningful employment. Sometimes they have friendships. Sometimes they have families. Um, sometimes they have good relationships with their families or parents or spouses, or children, or um, sometimes they have connections and experiences and communication and just novelty and things that feel 
all right and feel good and like feeling like you could have a home and have a couch and a blanket and you lie on the couch with that blanket and you close your eyes and smile and like, wow, this is, this feels amazing. You know, this feels really good in this moment, just for this moment um, or whatever it may be for you that feels really good in this moment. And imagine having a life with just moment after moment of that, as opposed to a life of torture, isolation, humiliation, degradation, shame, misery, horror, terror, fear, anxiety, depression, stress, violence, all of this threatening. We're living in a world where we have to be re rational or whatever, re reational, reactive, reactive. We have to be reactive, yeah. Um, but we have to be rational enough to participate in consensus reality if we want to play the game that everyone else is playing. Especially if we don't have an innate sense of goodness or knowing or truth or trust in ourselves, then we really need to rely on society. Because otherwise we end up dead, trafficked, homeless, psychotic. You know, there's all these different paths that you can go down when you can't fit in, but you're also not willing to or unable to play a particular role that society needs you to play in order for you to fit, you know, the criminal, the prisoner, whatever it fucking, it, you know, it's, 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 it's so infuriating and so sad that this, you know, and I'm not going to say society because I'm just saying it's, you know, that society is just a reflection of the mind. And there's all different characters in that society. And, but, and you can play every single one of those roles in your mind right now if you choose to. You're, you're, not, um, as, you're not as fixed or static as you believe yourself to be. Actors know this. An actor, a good actor, can play any role. Any role, no matter how bizarre or, or different from their normal life. We're all like this. We're all actors. You're acting right now. I'm acting right now. This talk that I'm doing, I'm thinking of it as sort of a self-confessional therapy, uh, journaling exercise or whatever, is acting. I'm doing my best. I'm trying to express something that's, I'm trying to bring what's in here out in a way that is um, and language gets, gets in the way too. Because I can act sane. I can act the part in any most situations that I would find myself in. I could also let myself go and, and act crazy. And what's unfortunate is, is that so many roles are exalted and so many of them are vilified. And I know that I need to just change my thinking around that and to truly accept all of those roles, including the ones that I judge, because my sort of, I judge those who judge. That's my workaround. Um, and it's that sort of hypocritical lens that I struggle with because, you know what, guys? I gotta tell you, the refrigerator is on. When that refrigerator turns on, the video is over.